Robbie, what's on your radar today? Well, the wearing of masks to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and other respiratory illnesses had almost no effect at the societal level, according to a rigorous new review of the available research. Quote, interestingly, 12 trials in the review, 10 in the community and two among healthcare workers, found that wearing masks in the community probably makes little or no difference to influenza-like or COVID-19-like illness transmission, writes Tom Jefferson, a British epidemiologist and co-author of the Cochrane Library's new report on these masking trials. Quote, equally, the review found that masks had no effect on laboratory-confirmed influenza or SARS-CoV-2 outcomes. Five other trials showed no difference between one type of mask over another. Now, that finding, it's significant, given how comprehensive Cochrane's review was. The randomized control trials had hundreds of thousands of participants and made useful comparisons. People who received masks, and according to self-reporting at least, actually wore them versus people who did not. Other studies that have tried to uncover the efficacy of mask requirements have tended to compare one municipality with another without taking into account relevant differences between the groups, what the vaccination rate was, for instance. This was true of an infamous study of masking in Arizona schools that was conducted at the county level. The findings, those findings, were cited by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention as reason to keep mask mandates in place. Now, quote, comparing Pima and Maricopa counties is a pointless way to study masks because the people are fundamentally different apart from masking, notes Vinay Prasad, an epidemiologist who has opposed COVID-19 mandates. He also writes that they have different rates of vaccination and different levels of caution. Cochrane, on the other hand, employed randomized control trials, which are considered the gold standard for review. And the results are difficult to argue with. Zoom out to the population level and masks did not have much of a discernible impact on COVID-19 cases. The pooled results of RCTs did not show a clear reduction in respiratory viral infection with the use of medical or surgical masks, write the authors. There were no clear differences between the use of medical, surgical masks compared with N95 respirators in healthcare workers when used in routine care to reduce respiratory viral infection. David Zweig, a writer who helped call attention to the flaws in the Arizona study and has been interviewed on our show many times, notes that these negative findings comport with basic reality. While individual mask wearers might get some benefit for a while if they consistently, perfectly wear masks, this doesn't comport with the aggregate experience. According to Zweig, even the most ardent mask supporters who want to wear them properly fail to do so. And as this study and others illustrate, even when masks are required, they're either not worn properly or not worn at all by a significant number of people. So I quotes Benjamin Recht, a, st- a statistician at UC Berkeley, who says at this point, I doubt any study will change anyone's mind about masking, but the one consistent finding of all of the randomized studies is that the effect of this intervention at the population level is vanishingly small. Well, the findings have yet to penetrate the mainstream media's bubble, whereas flawed studies like the Arizona one received rave reviews in the pages of the New York Times and also the Washington Post. So far, the Cochrane Review has not attracted coverage from these outlets whatsoever, nor has it garnered commentary from the CDC, an agency that has routinely seized on less compelling evidence in order to recommend the maintenance of intrusive COVID-19 interventions like mass mandates and like lockdowns. Now, indeed, while mask mandates are no longer a typical part of American life, there are still enclaves that require masking. Some U.S. schools have kept mask mandates in place or brought them back during flu season. Within the nation's capital, George Washington University still requires masks in classrooms. But if following the science means updating one's priors when new evidence becomes available, then institutions that require masks should finally concede, three years into the pandemic, that indefinitely forcing them on unwilling people, especially children, is not a defensible strategy. So for any lingering government requirements, let this please be the final and long overdue word, no more mandates. So this was a a review of a number of independent trial studies that use this randomized control process. And it just, it didn't turn up you know, if you strongly believe that masks were having a massive difference at the population to level, uh, level, you would have liked to see in some of these studies some data to support that, and they didn't find any. Yeah, well, what the study says is that, uh, for instance, relatively no- low numbers of people followed the guidance about wearing masks or about hand hygiene, which may have effect- affected the results of the studies. They're very clear that there are a number of factors, including transmission through eye ducts, the fact that people are 
not doing hand hygiene and then touching their masks, that people aren't wearing fitted masks, that these surgical masks that were never intended to stop particles from getting to your mouth and nose obviously don't work in the same way that N95 masks are supposed to, that people's N95 masks aren't in fact fitted and on and on and on. And what the study concludes is that more research is needed and that because uh, of the kind of the lack of um, compliance with the study, especially among children, the lack of evidence, I think you're completely right. COVID mask wearing among kids is not working. It's not stopping the transmission between kids. And the study notes it's because kids are the least likely group to actually be able to maintain their hygiene, to be able to wash their hands and keep their masks on and not act like kids. I think for the, the hand washing, they did find some positive results yeah, for hand washing on its own as an intervention. And I so think, that I think, did turn up some evidence. I think that's so important. And one of the things that people yeah. should be stressing out of the study is how I think, yes, the CDC was negligent and government officials have been negligent and not maintaining how important hand washing is and isn't is in fact. Mm -hmm. um, I know from personal experience, I've said this a million times on the show and elsewhere, I, when COVID started, I had this recognition about how certain habits that you grow up with, like wash your hands before dinner, in a social context, I would go to restaurants, I would touch the door to the restaurant, I would get out of my Uber and touch the door, I would sit down and start noshing on the snacks on the table. And for some reason, it just never clicked to me that I should be getting up and going to the bathroom. I mean, that's a, a, mm -hmm. a gross admission. But post-COVID, changing my behaviors in those ways, washing my hands more carry diligently. Carrying a little hand sanitizer Carrying with, hand yeah. sanitizer. I'm very diligent yeah. about those kinds of things. And my my incidence of illness has dropped precipitously. I don't think I've gotten a cold. I mean, I did get COVID at one point after flying on an international flight, at which point I had to become a mass at a certain point to eat over seven hours. But I haven't even gotten a cold. And I used to be sick basically, you know, November through February every year. So this idea that masks don't work because people aren't using masks Regularly well, that's or part of the study. Yeah, that's you know, I think it's really dangerous because there are a lot of people, you know, the mandates are gone. I think ultimately that's a good thing for civil libertarian reasons, but there's still a lot of people in this country who are very vulnerable to COVID. It just is. We talk a lot about how, oh, it's only obese people or it's only old people. Okay, that's a lot of people, especially in America. And I agree with everyone who says they should have been stressing vitamin D, they should have been stressing these other interventions. One of those things that they should have been stressing was wearing a mask isn't enough if you're not gonna wear a high quality mask and have it fitted appropriately. And also if you're not washing your hands and doing these other kinds of things. So if people still want mandates being largely gone and good, if people still actually have a sincere interest in protecting the population, then the, the, the guidance, what we should be pushing for, is for, I think, high quality masks to be distributed and made available for free, because they're not inexpensive. And moreover, that people should be getting more specific guidance about how to make sure their masks actually work. Not throwing up their hands and saying, well, because people aren't using masks properly and it's not working, we shouldn't use masks at all. Well, but it's a little bit of life gets in the way. Actual human behavior is a factor here and not one that can just be ignored. And I, I think there's a, a naivety among the kind of the, the CDC scientific elite type people that, that say, oh, yeah, this intervention will work because we'll just have everyone wear masks until we say don't wear masks anymore and they'll just wear masks at all times. But of course, that just doesn't. We can't do that. It doesn't reflect actual human. Like life is messier than that. People are not perfect little automatons that can just but internalize people, government advice and just do that. Maybe people can make their choices. People, well, people can, make can make their, their choices, choices about sure. not doing it. But there are a lot of people. I mean, you and I both know someone who we work with whose face we've never seen because mm -hmm. they are very diligent about mask wearing because their job makes them well, exposed. Everyone can do whatever choice they want for themselves. I, unlike you, Brianna, I get, <laughs> I get sick as often when I, I heard, when I was I locked down. I feeling a little under I... the weather now, Robbie, in fact. And I wonder if some of us took a test before they came into work today. Because, look, it, people's lived experience teaches them that they know that the masks have had some impact on their ability to have respiratory illnesses. And I encourage everyone to actually read this study. One, because I think that there's a really important evidence about the importance of hand washing. And two, because it's caveated up the wazoo about the, um, the, um, uh, the, the vulnerabilities of all of these kinds of studies. And it's also worth noting that these are measuring community spread. I want to see a study that is tracking 100 people who very diligently and appropriately wear masks and 100 people who don't. That's the kind of evidence that I think most people, especially immunocompromised people or folks who are, have close relationships with immunocompromised people, really want to know. If I am actually diligent, will it significantly lower my ability of catching COVID or passing it on to someone who is vulnerable? But, not, but you can not see that's is, kind of a, that's a question mark still. We don't really know that no, for sure. Uh, we, we, do, we don't have evidence. Yeah. I, I would say that this 
what the study proves is that wearing masks, what this study well, indicates the study is that wearing masks inaccurately fit in, in, a, yeah. in, a, in a poor it shows way. It does 100 people you described. Cause... 100 people perfectly diligently wearing masks. What it shows is that there aren't enough of those people in the world to have, well, have that be our main studied. way to combat or this. Not being, and this is part of what this, this study points out is that there has been a real lack and in inadequacy of funding and interest in pursuing these kinds of things. It's mm -hmm. worth knowing, you've pointed this out at studies in the past, that many of the studies here are either, they're all like pharmaceutical backed or government and pharmaceutical backed. And mm -hmm. you can see why a pharmaceutical company would have an interest in saying, don't worry about masks, the only thing that can protect you is me and my shots, mm -hmm. me and my vaccines. It's very interesting to me that there's been this alliance between people who are vaccine skeptical and concerned about the harmful side effects of vaccines, but also very anti-mask. Because from my perspective, as someone who is very sympathetic to a lot of the vaccine concerns, well, the only way left then to protect yourself is with physical barriers. The, only, the least invasive way to protect yourself is with physical barriers. So I hope that people don't take the study and say, throwing caution of this one too. to the, I, the wind. I, I mean, I've made no secret of the fact that I, I just I hate wearing them so much that I wanted the vaccines to be. I was really rooting for them to be super effective, so we wouldn't have to wear the masks anymore. It, and then it was it was disappointing when uh, when the vaccines didn't. You know, they still have positive. I, I've gotten vaccinated. They have positive effects for uh, especially for people in higher risk groups. But they, the, the the vaccines like the masks were not going to be you know a, a, a single policy that we're going. I mean, they in fact don't have very much impact on cases at all. Um, uh, 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 now, the study says the masks don't either, but... Uh, well, the, the, when, when not used appropriately. And so I, I think that one of the questions the study raises, and it's worth, it's worth following up on, why have there been no studies? We've been talking for two years. Why haven't there been? Vinay Prasad wrote about that in that Substack piece I cited. He's like, what? Fauci could have ordered 10 of these reviews right. and didn't. So why is it the only studies we get are basically yeah. these Pfizer fact studies, which confirm results that are convenient for Pfizer? Why hasn't the government or anybody else shown any interest? In Fauci had a lot of confident closely? things to express on the subject both ways <laughs> that, were, that would contradict themselves without, any, without actually evidence to really suggest it one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Interesting stuff. We'll have more rising right after this. Stay tuned.